In this video, I've compiled 13 of my favorite Spanish wine recommendations from the past year or so. There's red wines and white wines, and a variety of different regions represented, so there should be something for everyone. And be sure to stick around until the end, because two of my very favorite recommendations are at the end of this video. The next top collectible wine is from an outstanding historic Spanish producer that was founded way back in 1852. This is one of the very few Rioja producers that makes wine exclusively from its own estate vineyards. In only the finest vintages, Marquez de Murrieta produces a Castillo Igai Gran Reserva Especial. The 2012 vintage of this wine is already being compared to two legendary vintages, namely 1934 and 1964, and has already received one perfect score from James Suckling. The fruit for this wine comes from an 80-year-old single vineyard that's located at the highest point within the Igai estate. They use 81% Tempranillo and 19% Mazuelo for this wine. Interestingly, the Tempranillo matures for 34 months in 225 liter American oak barrels, whereas the Mazuelo matures in French oak barrels. After blending, the wine matures for about one year in concrete and then another two years in bottle. Due to the extended aging at the estate, this one can already be enjoyed now with perhaps a 20 to 30 minute decant, but it will certainly cruise in your cellar for decades as well. In fact, 64 Grand Reserve Especiales are still showing well to this day. Unfortunately, production volumes were down about 30% from the also excellent 2011 vintage. I purchased some of the 2011 from my cellar back in August as I really enjoyed that wine at a tasting. That one sells for around $210, and it's still worth adding to your collection if you can find it on shelves now. However, the 2012 vintage will cost you probably around $275 or so. This is unfortunately a pretty big step up in terms of price, but it's also a potentially legendary vintage that's arguably going to be one of the three top vintages for this wine in the last 90 years or so. So if you decide to add this one to your collection, I definitely think that you'll be very glad that you did. The next top wine for $50 or less comes from famed Spanish producer Elvaro Palacios. Palacios has long been recognized as one of the top producers in Priorat. His top wine sells for an astounding $2,000 a bottle now and is one of the most coveted wines among collectors. However, Palacios also makes an extremely enjoyable wine that sells for about $46.99 per bottle in the United States, namely Le Terrasse. The 2019 vintage for this wine was recently released. This will be the one to choose if you enjoy Grenache, as it's a blend that includes 82% Grenache, and it's a little bit more polished than this wine typically shows. But you could probably also find the 2018 vintage on shelves. The 2018 vintage was also excellent and includes a much higher percentage of Carignan. And so if you're a fan of Carignan, or you don't really like Grenache so much, definitely go with a 2018 vintage. This impressive wine features descriptors that include red and blue fruit, spice, licorice, floral notes, and the telltale minerality that I appreciate so much with Priorat wines. Better still, this is a wine that you can enjoy on release, and so there's no need to sell it before you enjoy it. But there's no rush either, as it will certainly continue to be enjoyable with a few more years of bottle age. Iconic Spanish producer La Rioja Alta traces its roots way back to 1890. La Rioja Alta's wines are the result of traditional winemaking methods combined with modern, state-of-the-art winemaking technology. For example, while La Rioja Alta's wines have been strong for many years, they recently experienced a jump in quality because they implemented optical sorting equipment. As a result, only the best fruit makes it into their wines now, and they're using a more stringent selection than they did in the past. The next of my favorite wines for around $40 per bottle is the 2016 La Rioja Alta Vina Ardanza Reserva. This excellent wine is a blend of 80% Tempranillo and 20% Garnacha. As with the 2015 vintage, this 2016 vintage was well received by critics and received a number of impressive scores. This is a wine that you can enjoy now in a pinch, but I think it would be better if you could hold off for at least another year or so. This wine is an ideal cellar defender as well because you can enjoy it in the near term 
or at any time over the next 10 years or so, so it gives you lots of flexibility in your cellar. This is always a reliable go-to wine, but the 2015 and 2016 vintages are particularly strong. So I definitely recommend the 2016 and certainly the 2015 as well if you're able to find that one. The next top wine for $60 a bottle is one that I discovered during a trip to Spain. During one of my first meals that trip, a sommelier recommended this wine, and it's been one of my favorites ever since. I'm talking about the Rafael Palacios as Sorts Godeo. This is a wine that comes from the Valdioras portion of Spain, which is in Galicia. This is an extremely impressive wine and my absolute favorite pairing for seafood paella. This is a wine that matures for seven months in 500 liter oak barrels. The vines date back to the 1970s and the early 1980s, which is certainly extremely old for Godea. This wine checks in at around 14.5% alcohol by volume. It's definitely a very elegant, refined wine. Some people even compare it to a Pellini Mont Rocher. 2021 was definitely a cooler vintage as well, so this is probably one of the most elegant expressions of as sorts ever produced. Pingus is one of the top producers in Spain's Ribera del Duero region. Their top wine is a cult wine that sells for more than $800 per bottle. They also have an extremely impressive second wine called Florida Pingus, which sells for a little more than $100 per bottle and which I enjoy as well. But fortunately for bargain hunters, they also have an extremely impressive third wine called Sai. The 2021 Sai was just released and I found it selling for a very reasonable $36 per bottle. This is a wine that Peter Sissick creates from fruit that he sources from independent growers in Ribera del Duero. Sissick has been encouraging these producers to use organic and biodynamic farming practices. Sissick rewards them by paying them well for the fruit that they produce and by paying them more as the quality levels improve. This is a wine that it's important for them to produce in volume so that they can keep the price reasonably low. They produce more than several hundred thousand bottles per year. This is a blend that consists of 90% Tempranillo and 10% Garnacha, and it comes in at an extremely reasonable 14% alcohol by volume. It's an incredibly rare opportunity to be able to get a wine of this quality from a top-notch producer for only around $36 per bottle, so you really can't go wrong with this one. The next top wine for $25 a bottle is an exceptional value that comes from the Jumilla Appellation in Spain. The highly acclaimed 2020 Casa Castillo La Tendida is a blend that consists of 85% Monastre, which is also known as Morved in other places, and 15% Garnacha. The fruit for this wine comes from vineyards that are planted at 750 meters above sea level and which are farmed organically. While these vines are fairly young, they're planted in some of the very best soils at Bodega Casa Castillo. As such, this is a wine that has some impressive elegance to it. It comes in at around 14.5% alcohol by volume. It has a medium body and fine grain tannins. The next top wine for $50 a bottle comes from one of the most historic producers in all of Spain. Specifically, I'm talking about Lopez Heredia. Lopez Heredia has been producing top expressions of Rioja for more than 140 years. This particular wine is the 2010 Lopez Heredia Vina Tondonia Rioja Reserva, which was extremely well received by critics and yet sells for less than $50 a bottle, even in the United States. This is a Tempranillo dominant blend that also includes a little bit of Grenache, Mazuelo, and Graciano. This is a wine that's definitely showing well already, but which will continue to improve with the bottle age. I'm going to have to get some more of it myself because I've been going through them so quickly that my supply is almost out. Tondoni is definitely the most prestigious of the vineyards that's owned by Lopez Heredia, and so this is my personal favorite, but they do make some other excellent examples of Rioja as well. If you've not yet tried this wine or stocked up on it, it's an absolute no-brainer and one that I highly recommend. In 1995, winemaker Benjamin Romeo acquired a cave in the Sierra Cantabria Mountains in La Rioja Alta. A year later, he made his very first vintage of La Cueva del Contador in his father's garage. In the years to follow, Benjamin continued to buy additional vineyard sources and to make wine. Before long, Benjamin received critical international acclaim when his 2004 vintage of Contador Cuvée received a perfect 100-point score. Benjamin is a highly regarded producer of Spanish wines, and he has a well-deserved reputation as being meticulous in his winemaking. 
Indeed, he even travels to France personally to select the oak from the forest that will be used for his oak barrels. And he goes to the mountains in Spain to select the cork that is used for the corks for his wines. Benjamin's wines are typically fairly fruit forward and made in more of a New World style. They can oftentimes resemble Ribera del Duero wines much more than they do wines from Rioja. Benjamin Romeo's wines can be quite expensive. However, I was able to locate the 2020 Benjamin Romeo Alma Contador for as little as $100 in the United States, so it should be even less than that in Europe. This is a wine that's a blend of fruit from three different vineyard sources that are at different altitudes. It's 92% Tempranillo and around 8% Garnacha. It spent 20 months maturing in 100% New French Oak, and it comes in at around 14.5% ABV. While many of Benjamin's wines require a few years of additional bottle age to enjoy, because they can be quite structured and tannic, this wine is a little bit more approachable, and so you could even enjoy it young with a healthy decant and some food, but it certainly will be better if you can keep your hands off it for a few years. But this is definitely a very exciting wine, and if you haven't tried one of Benjamin's wines yet, I think that this is an excellent candidate for your cellars. While prices for Spanish wine have been trending higher, I'm still finding some excellent values. For example, the 2020 Descendientes de Palacios Villa de Corullón is the next top wine for $50 per bottle. This is an extremely highly acclaimed wine that comes from the Bierzo region, which is in Castilla y León in Spain. Mencia is the dominant grape in Bierzo with around 75% of all plantings. Most of the best expressions of Mencia from Bierzo are grown on steep hillside vineyards from very old vines. This impressive wine has a red fruit profile with descriptors such as red cherry and raspberry. It comes in at a very modest 13.7% alcohol by volume. It has medium body and medium tannins, and it's a wine that's just really full of life and energy. I definitely recommend it if you're looking to try something new at around $50 per bottle. I recently did a video on some of my favorite Italian white wines, but I'm also a huge fan of Spanish white wines. So the next top wine for $50 a bottle is a Spanish white from outstanding producer Bodega Muga. Bodega Muga is a family-owned producer that was started back in the 1930s. While they do utilize traditional winemaking principles, they also embrace modern technology, and they have a heavy focus on quality. So the next top wine for $50 a bottle is the 2019 Bodega Muga Flor de Muga Blanco. This impressive wine is a blend that consists of 40% Viura, 30% Grenache Blanc, and 30% Maturana. The Maturana Blanca grape is almost extinct. There's only around 37 hectares left in Rioja, of which Bodega Muga has about 8 hectares. This is so because producers don't like it since it's known for producing low yields. Yet Bodega Muga is a big fan because during vintages when it's able to get ripe, it can be extremely impressive. This wine had a pretty interesting winemaking process as well, as it was fermented in oak barrels with indigenous yeasts. After that, it was matured in concrete egg for around three months, followed by another six months in new barriques that were produced by Bodega Muga's own cooperage. This wine received some excellent scores from critics. It has impressive acidity, which is contributed by the Maturana Blanco grape. It's definitely a wine that I think you would enjoy. It clocks in at around 13% alcohol by volume. It's one that will improve with a little bit of additional bottle age. So if you can resist it for another year or two, I think you will be rewarded. The next top wine for $25 a bottle is the 2018 Marquez de Morieta Finca Igai Reserva. Definitely shop around for this one, as I did see many places selling it for more than $25 a bottle. But even if you have to pay a little bit extra, it's definitely worth it, as this is an extraordinary wine for this price point. This wine is around 80% Tempranillo, but it also has some Graciano, Mazuelo, and Garnacha as well. This wine matures for around 21 months in a mix of new and used American oak, and then another 18 months in bottle before it's released, so it already has some decent aging on it. This is wine that comes in at around 14% alcohol by volume. This wine is medium bodied with a velvety texture and some impressive freshness. There's not quite as much power for this vintage as there has been for some past vintages. This is the wine that you can enjoy immediately, 
but it will certainly improve with a little more bottle age, and you can easily keep it 8 to 10 years or more. La Rioja Alta makes many outstanding wines that I enjoy, but the 904 is one of my absolute favorite. So the next top red wine for your collection is the 2015 La Rioja Alta Gran Reserva 904 Selección Especial Tinto, which sells for around $89 in the United States. If that name sounds a little bit longer than usual, it's because it is. In fact, this is the first time ever that La Rioja Alta has used the Selección Especial designation for the 904. This is a distinction that La Rioja Alta reserves for only the finest vintages when it feels that the wine should be celebrated. They've used it twice previously for the 890 and around four times for the Vigna Ardanza, but not until this excellent 2015 vintage have they used it for the 904. So they definitely think that this is going to be one of the best 904 vintages ever produced. This special wine is 90% Tempranillo and 10% Graciano, and it always spends at least four years in barrel and another four years in bottle before it's released. So extended aging, and as such, you can definitely enjoy it immediately, but it will certainly age for an extended time in your cellar as well. I first tasted this wine at the winery in the summer of 2022, and at that time they had decided to postpone the release by an additional year because they thought the wine was a little bit backwards and needed more time to show its best. And that decision certainly seems to have paid off, as the wine is definitely a little bit more vibrant than it was even last year, although it was certainly impressive when I tried it at the winery as well. To be sure, the price for this wine has been heading north and is considerably higher than it was for the most recent vintage, which was the 2011 vintage, but it still offers exceptional relative quality compared to other collectible wines of a similar caliber. And also, one of the best tips that I have to take advantage of this price discrepancy is to check to see if you can get some of the 2011 vintage. I recently replenished my stash of that and found a number of those selling for around $70. Plus, that one is even more approachable and in a better drinking window right now than the 2015. So my recommendation would be to buy more of the 2011 at around $70 and enjoy that one sooner and then save your 2015 and let those continue to improve in the cellar. While I know that everyone wants immediate gratification and wants to enjoy their wines right away, this is truly a potentially extraordinary wine with some substantial bottle aging. I was reminded of that just this week when I was fortunate enough to try the 1973 La Rioja Alta 904, and it was showing extremely well, even to this day. So certainly the 2015 vintage is definitely one that has a long life ahead of it, and so if you buy some of that one, I recommend that you get a number of bottles of it and maybe try one of them soon, but then save the other ones and let them age as long as you can. The next top red wine for your wine collection sells for around $99 a bottle, and it is from Bodega Muga. Specifically, it's their 2015 Prado Enea Gran Reserva, which is in the discussion of best ever vintages of Prado Enea. This is a highly acclaimed wine that received favorable scores from critics, it's a blend that consists of Tempranillo, Garnacha, Mazuelo, and Graciano. It matured for 36 months in oak, only 10% of which is new. It's a wine that combines richness in texture with freshness and acidity. It's already enjoyable, but it's definitely one that will cruise in the cellar for up to two decades, and it should be readily available as they produced 8,000 cases of it. If you're a fan of Spanish wines like I am, and you'd like to learn more about Spanish wines, be sure to check out some of my other videos about Spanish wines that are all compiled in the playlist linked above.